having an undefeated record is a big deal for boxers as it shows how difficult it is to win against them. But what if they lose their undefeated title? Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about when boxers lose their O. Keep watching till the end. Mike Tyson vs Buster Douglas March 6, 1985 is the day when Mike Tyson made his debut in professional boxing and there was no stopping from here for him. Quick knockouts was his signature. Tyson was the most feared man to be with within a ring during his prime. Tyson had won his first 37 matches and his first 19 were won by knockouts, out of which 12 happened in the first round. He became the youngest heavyweight champion in the world when he was only 20, and there was no stopping from here for him. Quick knockouts was his signature. Tyson was the most feared man to be with within a ring during his prime. Tyson had won his first 37 matches and his first 19 were won by knockouts out of which 12 happened in the first round. He became the youngest heavyweight champion when he was only 20. For five years, Tyson went on without losing a match until he faced Buster Douglas at the Tokyo Dome in Japan. February 11, 1990, the night which changed the history of heavyweight boxing. This was the night when Mike Tyson suffered his first professional boxing defeat. The fight is still regarded as one of the biggest upsets in boxing history. It was this night when the undefeated heavyweight champion Mike Tyson was knocked out. Buster Douglas shocked everyone when he knocked out Mike in the 10th round, throwing sand of the myth of Mike's invisibility. It was a lack of sleep which led to Mike losing his undefeated title. Anthony Joshua vs. Andy Ruiz In the first bout between Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz Jr. at the Madison Square Garden, there was a frantic 40 second period. During the opening of the third round, Joshua put all his power and knocked Ruiz off his feet for the first time in his career. Joshua. This would have been a memorable round if someone who took that forceful punch couldn't get up. Ruiz shrugged off the massive punch that Joshua gave him and threw some flurry punches of his own, which knocked Joshua to the ground and surprised the crowd who came to watch their match. The boxing commentators couldn't believe what they were seeing and deemed it as an unbelievable round. The shocks didn't stop there as Ruiz went on to win the fight in the 7th round via technical knockout which ended Joshua's undefeated record. This result was considered one of the biggest upsets in boxing history and was compared to the match between Mike Tyson and Buster Douglas. David Lemieux and Marco Antonio Rubio In Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Marco Antonio Rubio took down undefeated David Lemieux during the main event of Friday Night Fights. Both fighters had a combined 74 victories and 66 knockouts in total. As the fight began, Rubio played coy in the earlier rounds to understand Lemieux's moves. Lemieux was wasting a lot of his energy in punching Rubio on his boxing gloves rather than his open body. Once Rubio got into the middle of the ring, he seemed to know Lemieux's patterns and began to time him. He slugged away in the sixth round, clearly winning the round. Rubio picked up the victory after beating the undefeated prospect Lemieux in the seventh round of the match, leaving him with shaky legs. Rubio pounced after the 8th count, giving all that he had into Lemieux, looking forward to finishing off his work until Lemieux's trainer stopped the match. Lemieux looked as if he had suffered a broken jaw at the hands of Rubio. This match was David Lemieux's first match where he lost to his opponent. It was Rubio's 43rd knockout win and 50th victory. Lemieux was set to be the next big Canadian star, but fate had different plans for him. Devin Alexander vs Timothy Bradley The fight between Alexander and Bradley was not a super fight. It was barely even a fight, with none of the boxers even dominating each other or taking any big chances. It was a boring fight with many headbutts and complaints to the referee. It was a difficult fight to score, but it seemed as if Bradley was the one who was busier. He seemed to land hard punches compared to Alexander's soft ones, which were thrown with no conviction to knock the other person down. During the fight, it seemed as if Bradley was the fighter who was willing to open and take charge of the fight, but was getting tied up and clinched by Alexander. Alexander's trainer said that the headbutts were the only power shots which were powerfully used in the fight, but as headbutts are not legal, no points were given for them. Headbutts can influence the outcome of the fight though and leave the fighter in pain. After the 10th round of the fight, the decision was in favor of Bradley, making Alexander lose for the first time. Andre Berto vs Victor Ortiz Both the fighters Andre Berto and Victor Ortiz came out to fight in the first round. 
both of them had fast starts and a little more aggression from Ortiz's side. Ortiz dropped Berto halfway through and was on his way to winning by knockout. Berto rebounded and gave a knockdown to Ortiz in round two. All of Ortiz's punches are very good. That's the right hand again, and now Berto has a knockdown. That's an official knockdown, man. Ortiz recovered and fired back powerfully. Round three, four, and five were all Ortiz who pounded his inactive opponent against the ropes for the majority of the round, nearly doubling his punch output in the fight. It was round six which gave us a round of the year candidate with both of them scoring knockdowns. After Berto dropped Ortiz with a right hand in two minutes of the round, the referee almost stopped the fight. Ortiz was visibly hurt and wobbly on his feet, but recovered and dropped Berto by the end of the round. Round seven and eight were competitive and close, but Ortiz got the better of Berto by round 12 the winning was in favor of Ortiz, and that's what happened, making Berto lose. Matt Remillard vs. Miguel Angel Garcia The first four rounds between Matt Remillard and Miguel Angel Garcia were competitive and saw both fighters staying in the range of their opponent while exchanging precise punching and sound defense. Catching Remillard upstate with power shots and backing him into the corner, Garcia had a strong fifth round. By the end of the fifth round, Remillard's right eye saw slight swelling. Garcia continued to power in the 6th round against Remillard. In the 7th round, Remillard moved around more in the ring trying to work behind a jab. Garcia continued to fight but none of them landed with much effect. In the 8th round, both fighters fought closely with Remillard looking as if he was about to land to the body. But Garcia had other plans for him. He landed a left hand near the end of the round which sent Remillard back into the ropes where Remillard clinched until the end of the round. In round 9, Remillard was put down, but he got back up at the count of 7. We're in the ninth. Oh. He went down again and got back up and survived the round. Round 10, a right hand that sent Remillard down for the third time during the fight. Remillard's corner called off the fight even though he could have prepared for round 11. It was seen as if his ear had been injured and partially been detached. As the fight was called off, Garcia ended up winning the match. James Kirkland vs Nobuhiro Ishida Kirkland was known as the Mandingo Warrior, a huge punching bag. He had been an emerging contender in 2008, and after that, the ring issued a slow climb for him as a world title fighter. He was out of the ring for two years due to issues with the law. He came back in 2011, and within the span of 13 days, won as many fights as he could. The fight with Japanese fighter Nobuhiro Ishida was supposed to be an easy fight for James Kirkland. While given absolutely no chance to prove himself and being thought of as a fall guy for James Kirkland, Ishida surprised everyone in the crowd when he put Kirkland down with a left hand around 20 seconds or so into the fight. He kept on putting pressure onto Kirkland and then dropped him down again just after 70 seconds. James Kirkland tried getting back up and fighting against Ishida but had absolutely no luck. In less than 2 minutes, he was knocked over for the third time in the fight which resulted in the referee, Joe Cortez, stopping the bout and it led to Nobuhiro Ishida getting the victory. With this, we are at the end of our video. I hope you liked the content and don't forget to like and subscribe if you still haven't and don't forget to hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.